Hello and welcome to episode two of the Autocar Business Changemakers podcast in association with Tomorrow's Journey. I'm Felix Page, I'm Autocar's News and Features Editor. Joining me today in the studio is Chris Kirby, CEO of Tomorrow's Journey, and Carl Halkins, MD of subscription platform SoGo. Yeah, so welcome, Carl. Have we known each other for, for a while? Yeah. Um, I think the introduction as a uh, subscription platform we'll get to in a minute. Um, just for, for the purposes of the listeners, it'd just be good to get a um, brief intro on, on your background. So really varied across across auto before kind of coming into what you're, you're doing. So really good to hear about kind of where you started, where you've kind of come from and, and how you've ended up at Sogo. And then we'll get into uh, the, the subscription, not subscription bit after yeah, that. Yeah, so. sure. Uh, well, thanks both, and thanks for the intro. Um, I'll try not to glaze you both over because this will be. I'm um, unfortunately, or well, fortunately, 35 years in the business this year. So um, I started as a man and boy, as a kind of a graduate trainee, if you want to call it, in a Vauxhall dealer in late 80s, 90s, and then um, kind of ended up in manufacturer land. So um, kind of a number of fleet roles before I had the privilege of leading um, some of the car brands, so Opel, Vauxhall, MD in uh, Holland and Switzerland, and then ran Fiat Chrysler in the UK, the four brands, and last MD job was um, uh, managing director at Citroen UK, so before we got into the world of, uh, of Sogo. Excellent, yeah, great. And then uh, Sogo, uh, yeah, su- super interesting business, sort of three years in now. Three years nearly, yeah. yeah. Three, almost yeah. up to, to three Five years, months, yeah. Uh, yeah, a growing yeah, give us a, a, a bit of an overview because uh, Felix introduced you on the, the subscription side. You're yeah, sure. uh, kind of blurring the lines, I guess, between uh, yep, some yep. of the traditional and some of the forward yep. uh, kind of thinking business models. So, yeah, give us a bit of an overview in your own words and then we'll dive into it, I guess. Well, well I'll do the pain bit first if I can. Because, so, <laughs> yeah. as you know, when we do, you know, start up businesses, which you, I kind of describe when people ask you, you know, what's it like? You go, it's the best thing I've ever done. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, and the highs are great, the lows are, are pretty low, but you know, we're, as you said, we're nearly three years in. Um, we kind of set the business up, um, I'll talk, talk about the lows, we set the business up in a pandemic, mm. which was interesting. Um, and we kind of went on the basis, and you, we'll get to subscription because it's a good bit. We got on the basis that you know we were gonna be the all inscription, subscription business, excuse the pun, to every girl and guy on the street we're going to be on the tv we're going to be a brand name and everything else and three years nearly on what are we completely nothing like that at all so um we're we're a mobility business right so i'll I'll throw it out there now we're not subscription um i'll be a little bit controversial i don't like the word subscription because i think i've kind of someone asked me before you know what's subscription i said well that's amazon and netflix and you know that's what apple do and and i think everyone's trying to be the buzz yeah. of subscription now um so what what mobility is for us is we are predominantly we're 89 percent b2b now so get back to we're going to be completely different um and our business really is very focused towards i call them butcher baker candlestick maker um don't think we don't do private because we, we still do um but we deal with a lot of large corporates as now and obviously i know we'll come on to flexibility because that's you know what we're here to talk about so so yeah, so go not subscription mobility. Yeah. C- can I ask just quickly, uh, sure. why do you dislike that word subscription so much? What other connotations it has that you don't uh, feel so go engages with? Yeah, I, I tell you, um, I'm going to say good question, Felix, and I don't mean that in a condescending way because I think everybody is trying to be Amazon or Netflix. Um, and I said at the start. You know, I'm a simple lad who's been in the business all my life, and there's some great businesses out there already that are really well established, you know, that have probably been trading for over 100 years. And, you know, I won't go into names, we we'll probably will work them out who are still great businesses. And people all of a sudden come into the industry and think, you know what, we're going to disrupt it. And I, I get to subscription, and why do I hate it? I hate disruption because the world's disrupted, you know, since. COVID, why come and say you're going to disrupt the world? Because it's there. You've got to kind of follow it and find your your path. So the subscription bit for me is car and van, you know, I think through, even through COVID, if you look at mainstream dealers, everybody's got back to the point of people still like to go into a dealer and have a little touch and a feel and, you know, walk around the cars, etc. cetera. Um, so I, I, I don't like subscription purely and simply because the OEMs are going to do their own thing, Right. And we, you know, we can talk about that. Um, 
the so-called disruptors, I think they're probably finding it's a little bit more painful than they thought it was. Um, and from our side, you know, I mentioned we're a lot more focused on B2B. Um, dealing with retail customers on a month-by-month basis is pretty difficult when you're building a brand. And to get in really into that space of retail, it's a huge brand investment. Um but equally, and I'm, you know, I won't mention names. There's been other people who have spent a load of money on brand, but they haven't quite got it right because, you know, you get back to the touch and feel. So, it's an interesting space. Um, we've grown pretty quickly, just, you know, super quick about Sogo. We've, we've grown our fleet's four and a half, five thousand vehicles, which is not big. It's not small anymore, um, and you still. You know, you're still finding the challenges and on fuel type and car type and van type and everything else to to see where it is. So back to subscription, not for me to be honest. Um, you know, let's leave Amazon and Apple and, and Netflix of great multinational, huge successful businesses to do that. Yeah. I think it's really interesting, isn't it? I think the problem we haven't actually I was talking to someone else about this a, a few weeks ago is that. Um, like with a lot of these things, particularly in established industries, if someone comes in and does something a bit different, they give it a name and then everyone just gives that name to, to everything else they do. So they go, oh yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing subscription, it's Netflix for cars. And you go, well, that's just that's just leasing. Or, yeah, know, yeah. I talk about um, you know, Care by Volvo. I was a customer of Care by Volvo. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just leasing. Like, the, the, the experience is they've got a nice website and then the process is just like leasing a car from a dealer. It's, paid, exactly. it's manual paperwork. Exactly. It's a handover from the dealer. Yeah. But they're going in subscription. And they, yeah, I remember the guy called me and said, Welcome to the future of car ownership, and I've gone. Oh, don't don't kill this poor lad. <laughs> no, no, no. It's probably it's his, probably, enthusiasm, probably, yeah, probably yeah, his yeah. first Which day. But, but like it, well, it wasn't any different. Really, yeah, but yeah. they've gone. Oh, we're changing. It's a Netflix for cars, etc. Yeah, and it is going to move to a more flexible. It's about flexibility, right? That's the thing. It's about improving the customer experience. Actually, getting Completely. access to a car. Yeah. Whether you're an SME, a private individual, is really hard. It's full yeah. of friction. Like, yeah. like, the dealer process still isn't great. Um, leasing a car, PCH has grown massively. You know, get a car, anyone listening to this who's taken a car on PCH, the process is horrible, you know, because you get treated like a fleet customer as a retail individual. So, so there's room to like move all this stuff together. But what people have done is they've created this tag, started yeah. stamping it on things, yeah. um, and I think it's caused a lot of lot of confusion. Because we're the same; we do loads of stuff in the subscription space, and I like the space, but also yeah. it's been a bit tarnished by no one's at, no one's doing s- subscription. Yeah, cars, yeah. Um, I, I, I think. Sorry to interrupt. I think it's interesting what you say about um, the the kind of how people are looked after. You know, it, it blows my brains out. And you know, if you if you look how other industries look after people, yeah. they're reactive, they respond so much quicker. You know, we one of the things from our side when you're delivering a car or a van, everybody wants an Amazon type experience. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to know that Chris is on the A34. He's going to be with you at between two and three, you know, you get there, you get the full experience. And and it's managing that bit because, you know, clearly whether you're, whether you're a big uh, corporate and you're an employee of the corporate, you still want to be looked after like a private individual. Mm. And, and you get back to, as you said, you know, the car and van business, which has been around for 150 years now, the, the experience that people get is, is pretty horrible. Mm. So we're all guilty of that a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's the trade-off as well that I, I find is because I'm I'm with you on the subscription, the terminology, and, and kind of the, the change. Mm-hmm. Come, people going, I'll come in and completely change it, and you have to accept it's a complex industry. But there is also people on the other side that equally frustrate me that go, no, people just people love buying cars from us, yeah. like in the way they've been buying them. And you're yeah. like, literally, you, but these people are people who have never bought a car before because yeah, they worked uh, in the agree. industry the whole time. So you don't realise what the friction is. And that there's definitely like a huge space to move into where it's about customer experience. Right? Yeah, I yeah, think no, completely. It's a really hard thing to nail but the, the the other key bit is about the flexibility and then coming back to sogo where you guys are finding with smes mm-hmm. is actually probably a bigger um requirement for a, for an sme you, you butcher yeah. baker candlestick maker than it is for a private individual so again everyone yeah, did this whole sure. thing of you know, convertible in the summer four by four in the winter nonsense and, it, and it is nonsense it is, it's to, to be cause, honest because people don't want to change their car all the time no, because they, it's they, a pain but for a business flexibility is so important I yeah think. well i think for everybody in you know, on that bit, and again, you know, when you set up and we, you know, you mentioned Felix about, you know, when we kind of pulled the business, what was it like? You, you go into that perception, you think everybody's going to change their car or van every month. Do you know what? Nobody wants to change their car every van a month because you actually go, you know, you go into people after, you know, from our side, nine months, 12 months, hey, by the way, is it right if we swap your car over? Whatever sector you're in, 
And most people go, do you know what? I kind of, kind of like this. Do, do I really have to change? So there, there's that bit. And you get back to, as you said, Chris, you know, about PCH as an example. You know, and I've been around the industry long enough. It was only 15 years ago, but everyone was going, well, PC, you know, PCH, PCP, that won't work in the UK. It's launched in the US. That's just the fad. Everyone wants to own their cars. And, you know, we all know that most people brought a car because they've been to the bank and got a bank loan. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, it is going to change, you know, and um, Felix, I can look at you because you're a lot younger than me, but, <laughs> you, you know, car ownership is changing. You know, everyone talks about the iPhone generation, all that stuff. It is changing. People don't want to outlay their capital on products as much as, you know, they do now, and they do want flexibility. Yeah. And it will grow. Right, it's, it's got to grow, but it's making it work for businesses. How are you striking that balance between then flexibility and letting people keep what they want? You know, letting people get settled. Yeah, well, I, I tell you again, great learning from the start. So we, all of our vehicles are on our balance sheet. We own everything. We buy, buy off um, about eighteen manufacturers, so it's, it's a real mix. So we got six or seven of the call, but. Um, you know, I will give you everyone kind of goes. What do you do? I'll get back to the question. What do you do? And you go, well, you can have a Renault Zoe or, a, you know, a Corsa or you can have a three and a half ton drop side or an Aston Martin. And that, <laughs> that's as random as the fleet is. I mean, it, it really is. Getting back to your point, one thing we never envisaged, we thought, you know what, we keep the vehicles nine months, 12 months and we'll spin everything. And that, that's how it'll work. So you pick on vans. So you've got two problems with vans. The van market's massively constrained at the minute. You know, last year was a spike, this year's a, a reduction. But then you're putting vans into people and they, they go, oh, is it all right if I sign right it? Yeah, 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 it's fine, you know, no response. Well, I'll, I'll probably ply line it and rack it as well. Oh, that's okay. So then they've made that investment. They don't want to change their, their van yeah. every month because they've got, you know, they've got it there and it's their workplace. So, you know, vans for us are becoming, everything we do, just to be clear, everything is a month. So when businesses come to us, even large corporates, and say, well, if we sign up for three years, is there a, is there a difference in price? No, because the concept changes then. Um, but that's been something we've had to deal with. So all of a sudden you're bringing in SMR discussions and how you manage your maintenance when you don't envisage you're going to, etc. Fines is a car, could boy, to death about fines. <laughs> and how you interact with a customer about that. And, and let's be clear, and I know everybody talks about it, and I'm not doing a sales pitch on Sogo, if you don't look after the customer, they walk. Because everyone's got choices now, haven't they? Mm. You know, whether you get back to Sky or Amazon or Netflix or BT Sport or whatever your subscription, getting back to that word is, everyone's got a load more choices now. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's interesting. And it's back to that, the customer experience is key, particularly we're talking about the iPhone generation. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not so much about, you know, nobody cares really about ownership anymore, flexibility, but, it, but it's not changing every five minutes but yeah. it's the customer experience that comes with it right i want to see what i've got where i'm at with it when yep. can i change if yep. i change what can i change to and kind yep. of having that you know available and we were in india recently actually with some some customers there and it's got a completely different market but almost they're kind of jumping some of the pch pcp bits yeah um, and when you start talking to their kind of like sub 30 generation they're just used to getting that every all payments are on the phone they suddenly went in two years they basically went from everything being cash to not cash through using gpay yeah yeah um and these guys aren't like worried so much about price. They're just yeah. going. I just want ease of access. I just want if I go want a car, I just want one, and I will have yeah. it for a bit, and then I want to be able yeah. to, I want to be able to do it on my phone on my terms. And I think that's the the change yeah. that's happening, right? And that is probably if we were saying subscription like that, that's the box that it fits in, but it it gets been muddled. Into yeah, no, so. completely. And I think the other thing, Chris, is you know, you, we we get back to and look. No disrespect, because I said there's some amazing dealer groups out there. I mean. Yeah. You know, highly profitable that, 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 you know, disruptors, let's call them that, have tried to challenge and the dealer groups have gone, do you know what, we're going to learn off you and we'll do our own thing anyway because yeah. we've got the supply chain, we've got the structure, we've got the people. I think you get back to younger generation uh, and I kind of, when I, you know, God, I'm not a guru on this stuff, but when you talk to people, younger generation is now. You want it? Bang. Mm. I want it. So, you know, the perception of people going into a dealer and saying, well, I want to order that car, and the, de and the girl guy and the dealer says, well, I don't know how long it's going to be. You know, that's starting to go now because, you know, from our side, our, we, we, we always, we'll always hold 10%, 15% of fleet, okay? And there's a reason behind that because 
there's no point you winning some somebody, whether it's that butcher, baker, candlestick maker, a private individual or a business, and then going, yeah, actually, I want to transact with you now. So go and you go, oh, I haven't got a car. <laughs> so you've got to, you've got to do it. You know, ours, ours is seven, ten days worse. You'll have a, a car with you. Can we do something in 48 hours if we need to? Yeah. But it, it's always, it, there's a huge amount of logistics and time strains that goes around it. But getting back to what I said earlier, not to contradict it, if the customer wants it, you've got to do it. Mm. If you slow, you lose. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, so, that's the point of it. That's the customer yeah. experience, yeah, part, yeah. isn't it? I remember um, a friend of mine, I put in, that I helped them get into a, a PCH vehicle. Actually, they were changing. I put them into a PCH, it come mm. to an end. And I, the, it was like six phone calls or something they had to take because the dealer was delivering the new car and there yep. was two collection appointments, one to inspect, one to collect, and then one. And then she called the leasing company and said, oh, when when's my car coming? And they went, well, the dealer will contact you at some point in the next 30 days. Yeah. And he's like, what? And, and, all you, and all you do is go round and, and it... It's one of my pet hates. Is getting, I'm getting an old bloke. We're going to get into a mo- little moaning. We're going to have a little moaning. I think we've two grumpy old blokes. Yeah, get where well, you're younger than me, both of you. But, some optimistic balance. But, shall yeah, we? exactly. Yeah, throw that in, Phillies. But yeah, I mean, you know, the, the every industry's in now. This press seven for this one for two, you know. Your call's really important to us. Not really, because you're sitting on the call for 36 minutes, right? Mm. So, you know, one of the conversations you and I have had, Chris, over, I'm going to use that horrible word because it brings your business in, that journey. Yeah. Is is the tech, yeah. and and if you don't get the tech right, and the interaction between the customer, yeah. for, you know, to bring the vehicle to them, and let's yeah. be honest, we all want a seamless transaction, yeah. right? If Felix goes on and he wants his car, he wants to go, I want that one, but I want that car. I don't want a blank picture, and then I want to select it, and I'm going to put my driving license, and I'm going to pay my first payment, and when do I get it? Yeah. You know, we, we all want to get there. That's yeah, yeah. the utopia, isn't it? Is that is that a? I know you. You're summarising, but is that a, a fairly accurate depiction of what you want your tech yeah, to do? Yes, but I, I still want somebody to answer the phone. I'll get. I'll give you a good example, right? Um, I'm full of stories. You're going to work this out. Um, <laughs> I had a procurement director, major corporate, four thousand vehicles. We were chatting eighteen months ago. You know, we wanted to get in there. Please, so I think we're we're getting close to a large relationship with him. And he said, all I want to do is if the chief exec window, uh, windscreen sorry, cracks on a Sunday morning, all I want to know is who I ring. And, and we're all the same. You know, I go back to my manufacture days, you know, massive, you know, big brand. I worked for Vauxhall Motors for 20 plus years, you know, in, in between all the other bits. And, you know, 9,000 company vehicles. Oh, what happens if I get a tire? Well, it, it's all in the handbook it was. Nobody looks. All they want to do is ring up and go, I'm in a bit of a problem here. Who do I, who do I talk to? So yeah. getting back to the point, Felix, yeah, the, that I, I'll say utopia again. The utopia is seamless transaction, you know, like when you're doing your Netflix or your Sky or whatever, you want to order a movie, bosh, put your pin in, you got it. But you still need a backup. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I still think that's super important. Mm-hmm. And I've got into, I'm going to digress a bit, I've started getting into listening to podcasts and AI and the impact of AI, you know, God, that sounds pretty scary, but we've got to adapt because if we don't adapt, we're finished. Yeah. So, absolutely. and the customer bit is always adapting. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely, that's absolutely right. And I think that, back to that kind of customer experience part, it's just, it's so, uh, I guess that the industry is so complex, right? That's the yeah. thing. We, say we about make it complex. Yeah, right? yeah, and that's we all do. It's also a bit of a, a trade-off of the two things yeah, because yeah. you've got people who come in and go kazoo, you know, come in and go, oh, we just disrupt the whole thing, yeah. and not understanding the complexities of what happens when a tire goes and what happens, all of those things. But then also on the flip side, we've made the industry so complicated because yeah. you have this thing and you go, I've got my windscreen's gone, and that you go, and I'm so I call Vox or whose car it is, and they go, oh, is it on a lease? Because that's with the, which leasing company, or is it on finance? Yeah. Is it with finance? How many years is it? Because if it's within warranty, exactly. it's going to this person. Yeah. But if it's one, it's going to this other person. And the customer's going, I, I don't care. I just want you to fix my windscreen. No, no. And it's like it's, it's the thing I've said loads of times in meetings with OEMs and stuff before. It's going, that's your problem, not the customer. Doesn't care about your problems. But that's your problem. No, and you're and, right. And, and the customer after time, you, you, you know. Bang or pick on you, Felix. If you've got a lease, you, you know, half the time you're driving whatever brand you've got, say Audi as an example. You know, who's your lease with? You go, oh, I don't know. I'm driving an Audi <laughs> A3. You know, I know I'm paying this yeah. amount and everything. So it, it, it's got to work better than it does today. And, um, you know, you mentioned a brand I won't mention on. There's loads of people. And that's why I don't mm-hmm. like this disruption stuff. Yeah, yeah, because, okay. you, you know, it. it You've got to be humble. You've got to be so that customer piece for me. And again, you 
you know, Chris, you and I have spoken about it. You get a customer journey wrong, mm. you're dead. Mm. And you're dead quick mm. because people walk now. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, the loyalty piece is, is reducing, I think. And it's only because of choice. It's choice, time, speed, reaction, whatever you want to call it. It's can you do it? Can you do it fast? Yeah. If you can't, I'll probably have a look somewhere else. It's interesting to hear you talk about the balance between speed, efficiency, yeah. you know, no hassle solutions, yeah. but also bringing in that human element. Usually I associate that speed, that efficiency yeah. with automated systems, robotized systems where there's no, there's no human to call. I was getting a parcel delivered yesterday. Sorry, you weren't in. I was in. Yeah. Uh, they didn't ring. I the chucked door, but... over the fence. Well, no, yeah. they just left um, yeah. and said, oh, we'll try again tomorrow. I knew yeah. I wasn't going to be in tomorrow. Yeah. So I was trying to frantically look for a number yeah. to call just to speak to someone and yeah. explain the situation. Nothing. No. There's a chat bot you can talk yeah, to. They weren't helpful, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Well, um, was I helpful? Not really. Thanks. <laughs> Anything <laughs> else I can do? Exactly. <laughs> no. So how do, you, how do you bring that human element back into the system? You, you've got uh, the human element for me is the backup. I mean, AI, I, blimey, I'm not technical enough to talk about Are you guys much better me but AI is, AI is going to come right and that that response is going to be better than it is today but uh, you know we, we've been around a long while you know as a race and communication is still massive and fundamentally everybody wants to talk to somebody at the end I mean if you and I wish it was around when I was a young lad but you know if you're transacting on a, on a date app date at some point you've got to sit down with someone and say where do you live then? <laughs> and and how, you know, how often do you go out and all that? You've yeah. got to interact. Yeah. And, and it, it does, I mean, the, the experience and the learnings we've had is everybody wants to talk to somebody in the end. You know, it's like, I want that BMW or that Audi or whatever brand is, that Ford. Um, but by the way, can you, can you just tell me, you know, what are they like? Are they all right? You know, see... So you, you're not, again, not to contradict what I said before, that's not the touchy-feely bit, but it's a little bit of reassurance of going, oh, they're all right then. Mm. You know, I spoke so, to someone. And they, I spoke they to someone, and, and, I, and I feel a little bit more comfortable mm. someone's told me that. Yeah. Um, and everyone's still the same, and, I, and I'm even going to go younger generation. They still want that little bit of, little bit of comfort. Yeah, and, you, and the, the role technology can play, and certainly like the approach that we take with it, is that if you can streamline the basic stuff, it gives more time to make people available for, the, for those bits. Because Completely. if you have to, and you think back to like yeah, banking, you know, going back ten years, and it's still not mm-hmm. not brilliant. But you go back to banking, and you go, oh well, I used to have to make a payment, I have to call the bank, yeah. make a payment, right? Yeah. Make a payments online. All of a yeah. sudden, you take a massive bit out of the workload, but you still sometimes need to call the bank and go, I've had this weird charge on this weird loan. That can you explain it yeah, to yeah. me? But if you have, if you take out the transactional stuff, you know, and if if yeah, for our system, if we can automate, you know, ID checks and documents and all those things, the boring stuff. It then means that the operators have got more time to handle the, the soft bits. Yeah. Um, but it does make it, a re- and that's where AI, I think, will, it will close the gap even more. Oh, completely. It's quite funny when you talk about banking because I, uh, I had the first, you know, when you get spare six and a half minutes in a week and I was clearing out my office at home and you've, I found a checkbook. I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, have we still got checkbooks? You know, that's, it, 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 it's moved on so fast, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, and, and it is. As I said, you know, it's going to continue, continue, continue. You know, and if you look at, it's an interesting space getting back to that subscription mobility piece, what I'm going to talk about. You know, a lot of the manufacturers are, are now, you know, you mentioned Volvo, and now trying to emulate and get into that space. It's going to be interesting because obviously they're brand specific. Mm. And, and one of the things that we found is people do want multi-brand. You, you know, if you, if you go on, I'll pick on Netflix again. You're not going to go on one genre, are you? You go, do you know all I want to watch is action movies? Yeah. I'll, if, I'll, if those I'll... streaming services were split by, it wasn't Netflix and Amazon, it was you know, action, yep. rom com, yep. <laughs> you know, yeah. which one do you sign up and for? And everyone's $1.99. You're going to be spending a lot of money a month, <laughs> yeah, aren't you, yeah. before you know it? So yeah. it's choice again. It's choice, time, speed, efficiency, you know, getting back to the, the, the point about people. I think everybody wants a super lean organisation. Mm. The tech drives everything. Um, it's going to make us more efficient. It's more profitable. Reality is you, you need a blend. Mm. And the tech bit, you, you know, the thing I've learned on, on the startup, and you, Chris, you know, you're a tech business that is doing some great stuff. You learn pretty quickly that 
you never got enough people. The tech's not going as quick as you want it to. You want to get faster than you physically can. They're the frustrations you learn, I think, of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. One of the things that I wanted to touch on, actually, just going back to... Um, because I really want to get into some of the like OEM dealer bit yeah, yeah, for, sure. for subscription, but um, just thinking about like, the back, the final bit of that customer relationship, but we touched on it briefly, is this bit about kind of um, retention renewals and mm-hmm. things. And one of the things that I've always said, the key difference between a subscription style model and a traditional model is this idea of renewals. And I, again, we worked together on, on this in, in previous life about you know, retention of PCP, you know, mm-hmm. the end of contract renewal. Whereas really with a subscription type product, basically you, you're on churn. You're back into like an e-commerce, yep. more subscription thing where customer signs up to be a SoGo customer, whether it's an SME or an individual. And in theory, they just stay with you forever, right? They have the van, maybe they keep it for if two years. If you look after them. And you look up, yeah, exactly. So you have yeah. that. So you're, you're managing losing customers rather than trying to yeah. keep them at the end yeah. of contract. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a subtle, but like super, super important difference yeah. in, in how these business models are changing. In theory, yeah. you have a customer like a Netflix, you have a customer signs up to you, they could stay with you for 20 years. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think, you know, I mentioned about loyalty earlier, and I said people have got the ability to switch and change. You know, one of, again, one of the learnings is if you take a long-term lease, and again, no disrespect to those businesses because they're hugely successful. A lot of leasing companies want to get to the end and go, hey, you know what, you turn it, you, thanks for your car back, Chris, but you've damaged this, you've damaged that, you've mm-hmm. damaged that, and it's 1,250 quid. Mm-hmm. And at that point, you're going to go, well, no thanks. I don't think I'm going to do another one with you. And, and from our bit of that mobility piece, you have to manage that as well because yeah, you've got yeah. to be fair to customers. You can't expect a customer to come in and have your car for three months and then you know you bring it back and you give them a bill for a thousand pounds when they've been paying three hundred and seventy five pounds a month. Yeah. It's not realistic. So it's another learning in, yeah. in that respect. And it's a mindset thing as well. So actually it's just reminded me and it in it's a guy that you know because we work worked together, but the guy who was in charge of the end of contract stuff for fiat um, leasing when I was yeah, running, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was incentivized on making money on the end yeah. of contract charges. Yeah. So you're like, hang on a minute, you've got someone in the business whose yeah. job was yeah. to get as much money when a car came back as possible. Yeah. And you think that from a customer experience point of view, that's like, it's completely wrong. Yeah. It's not and a practice. Like, we have to do it. Like, my that. team, we're getting all yeah. these things and going to me, Chris, what's this thing? Yeah, you've got this yeah. customer. And we're like, we're tendering for 50 vans for this customer. And this guy's trying to charge you know, a grand for yeah. a scuffed alloy wheel. And, and then you challenge him and he goes, well, I've got my targets to hit. Like, exactly. exactly. What, are we do- what are we doing? But but I guess, I guess I'll artic- articulate is like, but, you know, doing the old manufacturer jobs, going around Europe. Mm. You don't speak Italian, as in, as in well, I don't, Italian or, or French well enough and you're on a bad taxi drive. Mm. And you know where you want to go because you've been there hundred times before. But the girl or guy's driving you all around, you know, Paris or Turin or wherever it is, and that's your end of contract charge. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you just think, I just want to get out of this now, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. It, 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 again, that's the big mindset. And manufacturers, dealers are having to change. I think mm. some of them are changing a damn sight quicker than others. Mm. Other ones are, you know, a lot of them are still going, well, we've done this before and we'll do it again next year. And mm. it's the old definition of insanity. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's the thing I was saying earlier about the people just going, well, no, no what we're doing now is the, yeah. is the perfect model. So why yeah, would yeah. we change? Yeah. And I guess that's the kind of next next point. The, the question for me really is in this kind of more flexible access, I'm going to stop using subscription. It's more like flexible access space, mm-hmm. whether it's in the SME or, or retail. You know, the, there's lots of debates about who's best best place for that, who's doing it best and who's best place for it. I'm interested in your take, both from like an OEM and a dealer point of view, because you just touched on it before, you know, OEM's got that single you know, action or rom-com kind mm-hmm. of line. Uh, dealer groups are really well placed, but often they're quite focused on that you know, transactional um, business. Yeah. Uh, and obviously SoGo is, yep. is part of a dealer, well, it has a, it links to a dealer group. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in what, what you think, how that might um, evolve over the next kind of four, four or five years. Um, I'll do dealers first. Um, you know, I think with agencies, a really interesting space at the minute. Um, and I think a lot of the manufacturers are going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and see how agency pans out before with other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to follow it rather than I'm going to, I'll use that word again, That dis- I'm not going to disrupt it. I'm going to wait and see what everybody else does. Um, and being best placed, you know, the UK market at the minute because of foreign exchange is probably not forefront for a load of manufacturers at the minute because they're going, you know, I'm again, because I'm old enough, I've been around it and not, you know, when foreign exchange is high, 
great, you know, let's pump the UK with market. When when it's low, oh, we're probably going to go to Germany or you know US or wh- wherever. Um, putting that aside, so dealer side, who's best place? There's a couple of there's a large PLC business that continues to grow. Um, I'll call them out, Arnold Clark. Yeah, you know, what a great business. Yeah, you know yeah, when absolutely. when oh we'll say it when Kazoo came out, so we're going to come and disrupt that. You don't come and disrupt Arnold Clark. They've been doing it a lot longer than you have, guys, and look at their brand and everything else they do around it. So I think it's survival of the fittest, Mm -hmm. and it is going to get leaner Mm -hmm. because of, you know, the consolidation of brands. You know, look at Stellantis, my old employer. You know, they started off when I was there, but, you know, in Opal. They acquired Opal Vauxhall, and now, you know, Fiat Chrysler becomes part of it, and all of a sudden you've got eight or nine brands instead of, one or two, that gives choice, yeah. right? Versus another manufacturer that might only have one brand, a Suzuki as an example. Mm-hmm. Is a customer gonna, a customer's gotta be absolutely mindset of, and I'll pick on Suzuki, I only want a Suzuki, if they're gonna move into that. Otherwise, that brand's probably gonna have to diversify its mix into a retail subscription business or allowing a big dealer group to manage it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think consolidation is on the table for dealers full stop because, you know, the retail footprint, we've all known there's probably been too many dealers full stop for any brand in the UK. You know, people are willing to travel more and then you've obviously internet's been around forever now, right? But so it, 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 it's a market that continues to evolve. But I think the offering to the customer is the ultimate game. If your offering's not strong... Yeah. How, how will you... How will you stay ahead? How will other startups stay ahead as the OEMs do clock on to this, catch on and, and adapt their model? What what will you be able to keep doing differently? Yeah. yeah. Um, firstly, people emulate, right? And I'm not I'm not an arrogant guy at all. You know, you mentioned before it's it, it, it's leasing, right? There's been monthly leasing around for a long while in different guises. Okay, and we just chose that's what we were going to do. Full stop. We weren't a daily rental company. We weren't a leasing company. We're a monthly leasing mobility provider, right? Um, how do we stay ahead? Simple people. people. If you've got good people, and everyone talks about, yeah, you know, our oh, people are the focus and everything. It's good people because people will still transact with people. You know, if we like each other, we're probably going to go and have a coffee and a beer. If we don't like each other, we won't, right? So simple as that. So, and, and you're getting back to, you mentioned it earlier, Chris, you know, with customers, not many people leave you if you're good to them. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, I'll be a little bit unpolitically correct. It's like if a girl goes out with a guy on a date or a girl guy goes out with a girl or two girls or whatever it is, if it's one-sided, they probably won't stay with that person. Mm. If it's a two-way relationship and there's a little bit of give and take, they'll stay. Mm. So tech... It's obviously a big part of it because we, you constantly got to evolve tech because, it, look, if you don't, you'd be on the curve. So people tech, offering, competitive, speed, and speed's important to me. Speed kills businesses. If you're slow, you're dead. Yeah. I think there's a number of challenges as well for, for OEMs. You say kind of cottoning on to it. I mean, technology is a big one. Like We've we both worked for OEMs. I've yep. worked for OEMs yep. as a supplier as well. Um, and we're very good at tech. Sorry, any OEMs listen to this, but generally the tech's, oh, pretty, tech's pretty terrible. Takes, oh, agree. Websites takes five, all... five years to roll something out, and when yeah. it does, it's out of date and doesn't work. Um, so that's going to be a big... Um, mm-hmm. you can, they can't be agile with it because it has to take into account so many markets and other things. But you've also got just the complexity of the supply chain, and agency does remove some of that. But you know, the thing I always say to, to people, and it's back to your kind of Audi leasing thing, OEMs don't have cars on their balance sheet. Nope. And they don't want them. They don't want them on their balance sheet. So Particularly at the you, end of the year. If you want, if you know, if Audi want or you know, two hundred thousand customers driving Audis on yep. subscription, they've got yep. to get someone's balance sheet to yep. put it on. And yep. they're not set up for that yep. because it's the you know dealers and leasing companies and things. So they would need to be partnering and other stuff. So there's a lot Completely. of challenges I think that would stop an OEM from really flourishing in this space. Yes. And the and, and sorry to interrupt, you know, you, you two points. R V risk. Yeah. You yeah. know, we our our decision was you've got to own the supply chain, right? So you know, brokers, are they going to survive another conversation? But you, you get back to the OEM and you mentioned tech. O- OEMs, and, you know, we've had the experience for a number of years, they're cruise liners, they're aircraft carriers, they're not ribs or speedboats. 
the bureaucracy kills it because it's the constant, well, I've got to talk to him and she's got to talk to him, then he's got to talk to her, and it goes around 15 different markets and procurement processes. No disrespect to them, they're hugely Absolutely. successful businesses. But that's how they operate. And so many stakeholders, so many markets, it's a challenging thing. Completely. It's, not, it's yeah. not a criticism yeah. of it, but it stops them being agile, I think. That yeah, happens. and that's the danger with any startup business, it comes big. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, you, we're sitting in here today. I mean, it's a big organisation doing this, you know, this podcast. But and the more people come in, everyone's got opinions, which is good, right? Mm. But it, it, it's that agility bit. And like you said, they've either there will be OEMs out there, manufacturers, whatever you want to call them, who will get it right. Yeah, um, and their tech will be right. And less, there's some great brands out there, some bl- blooming good products out there. It's the old adage of. You know, if I pick up an auto car magazine, are there any bad cars in there now? Not really. <laughs> Read next week. Um, <laughs> but no, you're, you're quite right. And I think customers are, um, they're able to experience a wider array of products now because of these models that are afforded to them, yeah. which means that they're getting more of an idea of the quirks of a BMW versus the quirks of a of an Audi, yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but do, do you want... Do you want your customers to chop and change? Do you want them to to try lots of different things and then eventually settle, or are you, are you happy for them to get in one and be gone? No, there's a little bit of I'll tell you the two answers, Felix. One, we want people to experience different products because if we've got a product that's good for us, we'll obviously promote the product. I'll talk about electric a bit and if we got time to talk about you know fuel cells and everything else so give it give an example on your question if you're in a car today and you're paying 400 pounds we might come to you you're in a bmw today we might come to you in a year's time and say do you fancy an audi right um and you'll say well oh, i don't know i quite like bmw i want to stay in there okay fine we have another bmw or you want an audi or do you want to try something else that's brand new so it's an education from us in lots of ways because you're going to the customer and say, well, what about this and what about that? Has that been around for a while? Of course, that is. it's just different guys again. So I do want people to, to, to chop and change to an extent. Um, fuel types, look, I'll, I'll throw it out there. Do I think electric is the solution? No, I think it's a bridging gap. COVID was interesting for us when I said when we set the business up because... If you pick on a brand three years ago, the range was probably 110 miles. If you're in a long-term lease, and then I take it something on a month-by-month basis, all of a sudden I'm doing 250 miles, and you're charging your car up every other day, and I'm charging mine up twice a week. My tech's better. My my uh, fuel range is better. I'm probably in a cheaper charging solution now than I was three years ago. Do you want to change? Blooming right, you do. So that's a big mindset to people um you know i think hydrogens are going to happen you know whether you talk about fuel cells etc it's going to happen and it's interesting in the market right at this time and this comes back to your question felix a little bit of you know you probably could have been paying 400 pounds for an electric vehicle seven months ago great you know probably further than seven months ago utility pricing's good cost of ownership's great you're locked into that car for four years all of a sudden, your gas and electric bill has tripled on top of your interest rates and your mortgage and everything else. You might actually go, do you know what? I want to go back to a combustion engine. I'll go back to a Fiesta. Because my diesel engine did yeah. 500 miles a month and my electric ones now cost me a blooming lot of money every every week, every month. So again, that's the flexibility bit. Um, you know, that's, you know, there, there's car subscription businesses out there on day one. So we're only going to do electric. We're super green. You know, look at us, and it's great. If you don't want an electric car, you you you're now cornering yourself at the market. So that's why it's you know electric, fevs, diesel, petrol, drop sides, <laughs> a couple of Aston Martins, which unfortunately <laughs> I'm not driving. I was going to say you never took off on me one of those either. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> I didn't ask Chris. No, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, yeah. I think that whole um, yeah that that whole flexibility, particularly in the, the world of electric cars, is pretty. Uh, Pretty fascinating the, the speed at which the technology is moving on, but that obviously gives massive RV challenges, which is also another right thing. at the time yeah. now as well. Yeah, yeah. massive it's part, yeah. part of the industry yeah. is a thing we're hearing quite a lot. Of, yeah, you know, what, what we're doing with all these EV, the, yeah. the kind of first gen of the proper first gen EVs coming back on the yeah, end of two year PCHs and yeah, things and an, an interesting market as well right now because 
you know, just again, conscious of time and everyone. But if you take EV now, the market's probably flipped round. You know, a year ago, manufacturers going, you can't have any EVs for a year. Yeah, yeah. They're now flipping it around and going, well, I can't get you a diesel engine for six months, but I can get you an EV tomorrow. <laughs> So there's a little bit of oversupply in the market, which is having its own pressure point on yeah. consumer pricing. Yeah. Exacerbated by Tesla slashing its prices. Exactly, by, uh, yeah. By yeah. yeah. And a new, new market entrance, which is a whole other thing that we probably haven't got time to, uh, no, exactly. to open up. We'd be here for hours. It's super, <laughs> yeah. uh, super yeah. dynamic space. Um, but I think that, that has been extremely interesting. It's, it's amazing to hear that you've, <laughs> you've got a solution for uh, for everything that we're sort of wondering. I don't know about that feeling. Like that, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we'll give it a go, put it that way. Well, let's see, let's see how it goes, yeah, 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 yeah basically. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for and talking to us about it. Thank Appreciate you to Chris it. for joining me today yeah, and, uh, and, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.